Hola a todos, ¿cómo están? Bienvenidos. Welcome everyone. We're here with the, our super talented friend, Mark Gabriel. He's over there. Hi, Hi everybody. Thanks for coming to our intro launch video. <laughs> Thanks for connecting. We're gonna, um, well, we're gonna wait until some people are getting connected tuned into this adventure that is going to start today and it's going to last for three weeks. Um, we are so thankful to have a community like we have and to have artists like Mark that they donate their time, their creativity, their space, um, their brain, their heart for our kids, uh, the children, the youth of Todos Santos, which right now are um, different, a little chaotic life, but we're there, we're hanging, and that's why we can keep going, because of people like Mark. Yeah, well, uh, the community inspires it, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it does. I think the first day I came here, and I, uh, early morning driving through the streets, and seeing everybody out, their front stoops, uh, cleaning, and getting prepping for the day as a town already was a good sign yeah the community yeah welcome open arms yeah so so we're as palapa we're always thankful for our donors because that's the reason why we do what we do um well i'm going to talk a little bit about palapa right now uh, i don't know how many thank you to ricardo that it's doing all the things behind the cameras to jesse to jamie and are we having some people connected over there? Viewers, okay, thank you for tuning. Um, so, uh, with Palapa, uh, we, are, we have a few programs that we offer. We have the Beca program, which is a program that we offer to kids of any school. Um, we help them to go to high school, uh, we help them to go to college, we help them if they need to go to La Paz, to go to mainland. So we basically, uh, it's not just like helping kids from our school, it's helping kids from all around town, from yeah. every school yeah. here in town, so that they can have like a better quality of education. And then we have the Puente Bridge to English program, which this program is towards uh, school-aged youth, and we have 145 students enrolled. And we do usually this program in October. This year, the programs are a little slow. It's not been the same like this year and last year because of COVID, we all know that. Um, but this, it's so important for kids here in Todos Santos to learn English because that opens so many doors. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Palapa Adult English program which is also very important because we're, gonna, we're giving the opportunity started with the parents of the kids that were very interested and we have, we're giving them the opportunity. Our wonderful Kate, which here is a neighbor from Catecolote, helped us with that program and they have been doing it virtually. Uh, so it's going on still today. And that's a little bit about us, yeah. um, and now we're going to go with Mark, and we're going to talk about him. <laughs> what? I was really enjoying that part. Yes. <laughs> so, um, tell us, Mark, we yes. want to know about you, we want to know all your secrets, we want to know how these COVID times are going with your art, uh -huh. what have you had to do with the gallery, you open your gallery this year, which seems like a huge adventure. Yes. But you rock it, so tell us, how has something changed? How are you working with the circumstances? I mean, it's funny, right? In a small town, small city like this, um, sometimes you can, you feel like it's life is normal until you want to go do something and it's like, oh, the restaurants are at, not at capacity or you can't go to your favorite bar for a drink and then all of a sudden, because I'm also, as an artist, for me anyway, I'm a bit of a hermit and I'm good at spending time by myself. I can yeah. close the studio doors and I can be here for days. And uh, that happens whether there's a pandemic or zombies or whatever <laughs> raging outside. So uh, it's a, sometimes it's a bit of a slap in the face, uh, like a cold uh, 
I don't know. I feel like I can forget sometimes when I get in my head yeah. making art, and then I come out and I'm like, oh, why aren't we having dinner parties? And so it's almost like I need to that a reminder. I have a reminder frequently. Whereas other people, you know, like they want, they're in the service industry and they're dealing with this like all the time. I haven't. The good thing is I have an escape valve, so that hasn't changed. But the thing that's definitely been weird is yeah, opening up a gallery, which is a very much a social community mm -hmm. endeavor, um, right in the middle of a pandemic. Not an ideal time to open any business like that. Yeah. But it's been actually really great. I mean, there's been a couple of times where the danger levels of our town, um, you know, the hospitals hit capacity and everything, so we everything shuts down. And um, but. The nature of what we've designed here with this space, uh, having the two entrances and stuff, let small groups through or couples through, so we can we can still operate in this time. So I feel like kind of blessed. Yeah. And you know, uh, we don't need a bunch of tourists in town to still make this viable. We have yeah. a really strong community of support. So even if the traffic up dies down a little bit. Choice of language, but the, like the, yeah, you know, the tourists, tourism slows down a little bit. Um, we're still okay because it's a it's an art loving town. Yeah. So it's uh, it's been a really good experience, and the support locally has been great. So I don't know if you have been seeing. Well, if you haven't, please go inside the website. Like talking. Yeah. Uh, like talk a little bit about how the website is going because yeah. they're doing this amazing like three D walk. Through the paintings and yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Of course, well, that's kind of the fun experimental part because uh, I mean I'm a new gallery owner anyway. I'm an artist who this is my first gallery. Jesse and I we just sort of it sort of happened fairly organically. So the whole thing is an experiment. Um, but I think what one of my favorite parts is that um, we and maybe this is one of the silver linings of a pandemic is the online. Uh, art thing, um, the community has really rallied. You take examples from other galleries, we follow other galleries, and we've joined a community of international galleries from yeah. uh, a community called Artland, and basically that joins us with European and Asian uh, and Latin American and North American galleries and sort of um, brings the community kind of and collectors, art collectors. Uh, into a certain a space, but what we have had going for us, Jesse has been building yeah these virtual rooms, yeah. which again is one of those things you experiment with. I mean, I don't know if everybody's into it, but basically it's a digital version of the physical space. You yeah. can walk into it, you can walk through it, you can see all the art, you can then kind of get right into it. And I mean, the thing that you usually lose online, as you know, with art, Instagram, and Facebook, is context. How, yeah. how big is that? What yeah. the colors, are they really like that? The textures. The, the texture. Yeah. So the cool thing about having a walkthrough is some of that context is put back in place. You can see size relation to, you know, to furniture in a room, and you can actually you can move around. And then the other thing that's great is, as an artist, I also am really interested in sound, the kind of music that I play when I'm working, or not playing. Yeah. And so the thing that we did with our opening show, which I thought was really fun and got some good response, was building a playlist, uh, right. a Spotify playlist that you could throw out there so when someone is in your virtual space, they can also listen to the music that inspired the show or thematically is somehow connected to the art. Okay. And I think, and I know definitely in two examples of pieces that I sold at that show were directly about that engagement. They were excited by the music and uh, uh, and going back, even though one of them was at the physical show, they could go back even when the show was kind of taken down and still see it yeah. archived there forever. And so now they, they kind of grew to love a piece and they listened to the music and they came back for it. So that's yeah, been great. Like the whole experience, yeah. you know? You're like touching all the senses. Right. You're like integrating the, the visual, the sound, that's, that's Really, if you haven't gone into Mark website, I highly recommend you go in and you experience this. Yeah. Well, well, tell us one song that inspired your your seventies collection. Uh huh. Well, it was one of the discoveries that I made. <laughs> okay. It's a song called Baby. 
Okay. Sing um, it. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's, uh, oh my god, now I can't remember her name on the spot. <laughs> so she, but she's from Brazil. Okay. And it's a one thing. Anyway, I. Because one thing I was really interested in is not just music of the time period, which is, which is important, but as a, say, especially for the series, as a North American traveler in the 50s, 60s, going to exotic locations, yeah. not just, I mean, how are they hearing the music? If you go into a local restaurant, you know, you're hearing, and maybe a local radio station, if some places have, have radio stations, but the other thing I was interested in, what kind of music would they actually be listening to? Okay. Because you listen, you watch period TV shows and stuff, and you yeah. go, oh, well, the producer said, I, you know, that sh show, the time period matches this song, but in this certain venue, would that song have actually been playing? Yeah. You know, so I was kind of trying to dig into some of the um, music that would be just local, that you would have to be in that space at oh. that time. So that was part of the playlist, I think. I found most exciting and found some pieces that I quite love. Okay, we have to go inside and listen to that playlist. Yeah, I'll send, I'll send you a thing. Really, yeah. it's gonna transport us to the 50s <laughs> and 60s. Well, yeah, actually with the school, we've been seeing a lot of interesting projects because they also have been doing a lot of, well, of, of course, the everything gets distance learning, which mm -hmm. has been like a huge, um, I mean, change for the teachers, the parents, and the students. And we're, we're talking about the students that are 13, from 13 to 18 years old, where it's very hard to be at your parents' house. And <laughs> it's true, it's true. Yeah. And like, imagine the effort of the teachers trying to keep all this, like, youth, like, sitting down, like, telling them, like, on a screen and not with personal, not a, like, uh, when you're in person, you can totally see like the movements or you can see like little things that you cannot see in the screen. Yeah. So we are having like, it blows our minds how our teachers have been like putting all their effort and doing all these amazing creative projects see. that we've been sharing. They've been doing a lot of like, because actually I'm seeing that um, it was Krista's show. Mm. It was the opening last um, yesterday, and she did some Juana Inés de la Cruz, which it's over there. And the kids did this project in literature where they had to draw a poem of Sor Juana. Huh. So they, it's so interesting and so beautiful how they're becoming their own persons doing all this art. No, which is very important. And we can see now all the exhibition shown from yesterday, mm -hmm. which that's Cristas, which is such a rock star. Her exhibition is called El Que Calla Otorga, which is a Mexican saying that it's like if you don't talk, you're letting it happen. Mm -hmm. So it's an homage to all these amazing women. Uh, during history and there is one woman that she, one beautiful lady that she painted that is from here, from Dos Santos, from Las Playitas. Um, and we were here yesterday, it was nice to get with friends in a social, safe environment. Obviously, um, I mean, right now we cannot wear masks because if not you wouldn't be able to understand us, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that. So we are, but we are. Lips are, lips are important. Exactly, lips are important. Yeah. Exactly, right now. Um, so going back to the school, it's been a total challenge for everyone, and inclusive. Like we, our kids, they're all 80, ninety percent of the kids are. They have scholarships. That's how it works. Like not just like a few of them pay the whole t whole tuition, but all of them pay like from an amount of pesos to another amount. It depends on the needs of the family. And with this COVID, everything has changed, right? Because there has been a lot of like this. Um, this town lives a lot with tourism, restaurants, hotels, and obviously that slowed down a lot. So we've been supporting parents. We did tuition forgiveness on 2020 until January. They started paying tuition right now. 
we are not able to do the Dos Santos Open Studio Tour, which usually we get like a nice amount of of venue, yeah. revenue, revenue, revenue. Thank you of revenue. So we're trying to figure it out. So this is one of the ways of figuring it out. Yeah. So if obviously please bid for the painting that we're gonna talk in a little bit about. But if you can make any donation, you can see all the here numbers, website, everything, because we we, we do need uh, more donors, and it's just a weird year. All these money is going to scholarships. We like I think it's a moment in time where we do need to support the youth. Mm -hmm. Education. Education. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So that's that for me. <laughs> so okay, so we're going. Sorry, I talked a lot. Um, but this, it's about Palapa. So we have, I have to explain about what is all this about. Yeah. So what are we gonna do, Mark? Tell us what is this crazy idea and adventure that you're gonna take? Yeah. Well, I think that one of the things that um, one of the things about having my studio space in. A gallery that's directly on the street. I mean, I, I was never really a fan of people coming in and looking over my shoulder while I was working. I was I don't like people generally watching what I'm doing. Um, but having the studio directly accessing the street meant that people are coming in, and I got more excited about that talking about my art than I thought I would. And there's, so there's been a lot of interest also online when I share stuff and more interest it seems in the process um, which is good because I you know more interested in the process than maybe even the finished art which I which for me so philosophically the the thing about art for me is that it is it is all process it's it's yeah. once it's finished um, you can call it what you want to call it you can put it on the wall you can in the garbage, you can burn it, you can do whatever you want with it, call it art, don't call it art. Um, but for me, the art is the doing of the thing. And I, I think um, I'm ready to sort of expose that journey that I go on okay. a little bit. Um, you know, like my friend just told me, don't give them all your secrets, but you know, we gotta... Give them all, Mark. Yeah. Give I also, all. I think the CIA said, you know, the best lies are 80% truth. Yeah. And uh, twenty percent that little bit of information that you that changes everything. But I I think um, I'm kind of excited to. I mean, I'm not the best, obviously, order. I'm a bit of a I'm a storyteller, but you know, I can probably show you better my process by actually showing you the process. So what we're doing is kind of inviting you guys locally, uh, nationally, in this country that's adopted me, Mexico, and also internationally through the beauty of. Uh, YouTube and yeah. you know and the internet we can all share and I can show you what I'm doing and hopefully you like it basically the thing is uh, I don't usually know how long a piece is gonna take okay um, but we have a deadline of three weeks yeah so that's gonna be fun um, and <laughs> along the way I'm gonna be making little videos of exactly what I'm doing I may talk a little bit about it, I guess, which along the way, but I'd be mostly visual um, because it is a visual art and you, maybe that's where the people who are interested in joining us on this adventure, on this journey, um, can start piecing together um, what I'm, how I get inspired to do things, what, um, what visually inspires me. Um, what what visually like. inspires you? Um, Tell us a, bit of, a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's... It's maybe not surprisingly, it's not art. I, I like looking at art and I miss galleries, going to galleries and seeing other people's art. But what inspires me is people talking, um, listening to other people talk. I like watching the traffic go by. Um, I really like, I'm a lateral thinker, so I like, you know, if I'm moving around and something catches my eye, uh, it'll stick in my brain like a color, a pink wall, how a pink wall is right against the blue wall, which normally would sort of maybe be freaky, and all of a sudden it's like, huh, there's something there, and then the yellow beetle parks in front of it, and it's like, oh, yeah, there's that kind of stuff. And, I, and you know, that gets blogged in um, as I move through, uh, move through a day. 
And that stuff generally will sit in the subconscious. And the idea is that I let, if I can get out of the way of my subconscious, that's where all that stuff kind of, the magic happens. So that's also what's going to be interesting for me in showing you what the thing is. It's a lot of it is accidental. Hopefully it's accidental because if I'm surprised by what I'm doing, then someone else will be surprised in what happened. That's how I sort of see it. If, I, if it's all premeditated and I know exactly what's going on, first, I'm going to be the first person bored about that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be a big surprise, the whole thing. The journey will be a bit of a thing. And then, um, yeah, so we're going to be working. Uh, I'll be doing this for three weeks, and you guys will follow along and watch the videos and watch the piece progress from blank canvas to a finished thing. And, um, and then at the end, we're going to raise a bunch of money to help these kids. Yes, please, let's raise on a bunch of money to help the kids. Yeah. It's all about the kids and it's like the perfect uh, integration with community, art, culture, education, which all, like, if it doesn't go together, hand by hand, the community doesn't grow. So please, if you, um, if you, like, we know it's, it's difficult time, so it's, if you're not able to bid, we appreciate any donation, any donation, it's a lot. Like you cannot imagine how you think of that. It's nothing. No, it just changed lives. It changed like every kid's life, like every day. So we're very fortunate to have uh, this community, to have you, and so here people that are just uh, connecting. We're with Mark Gabriel. We're interviewing him for the art adventure that we're gonna do here for Palapa, for the Palapa School. Which we are about to finish our second story building. Second story building, that's what you say. Mm -hmm. Nuestro segundo piso está a punto de terminarse, mm -hmm. que es donde va a estar preparatoria. Estamos super emocionados. We are very excited about this. Mm -hmm. It's like the vision that our founders have been having for a while. And now it's gonna become true. And yeah. now what we want is to have the kids in there, right? Yeah, right. So that's and the kids want to also live the space, right? Because right now... So people are at home, right? Yes. They're all, everyone is remote right yes, now? Yes, okay. everyone is remote. Is that working okay as far as everyone has computers and everybody's got well, actually, internet access and all thank that? Thank you for asking because that was a challenge at the beginning. We gave iPads to the kids that didn't have computers. We helped them with their internet because a lot of them didn't have internet. A lot of them maybe they have like it's a family and two kids go to Palapa and they have one, only one computer. Yeah. So we helped them with that. Right. Um, we also also give them some guias, yeah, some guidelines, the printed guidelines, so they can go and pick them up at the school. Yeah. But we're talking about high school, so the, the I think the challenge the. In, Como el reto más importante, the most important. The most important challenge has been with the seventh graders, which uh -huh. is primero secundaria, because they just got into high school. Right. They don't know the classmates. Right. They don't know the teachers. They like went into seventh grade and everything is a computer and they just know everyone through the screen. Yeah. So it's been, I cannot imagine if that no. would have happened to me, like, right? Yeah. I don't know how you were in seventh grade, but me, I was a little <laughs> chaotic and nervous and anxious. And <laughs> 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 so it's been a challenge and we have this support, student support program that has been done by teacher Monica Rodriguez, which she's doing these episodes that we have in our YouTube channel Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Jamie's gonna kill me because I haven't said that. <laughs> so please, we have like 62 followers and we need a thousand. Hmm. A thousand, yeah, or a hundred. No, I think a thousand. We need a thousand so that it's like it, we can, I don't know exactly how it works, but we will need a thousand <laughs> followers. So please just <laughs> follow us yeah. in our YouTube channel. You can see it over there, mm -hmm. here. <laughs> We would really appreciate. It. Like that's the, that's the thing. Like if you cannot, you you don't only help donating. You help us if you connect to our YouTube channel. If you see our newsletter. If you share our posts. If you share right now the live stream. Like it's not all about money. It's about communication. It's about sharing. It's about like building this net where we can all 
connect and this net that we can all connect. Okay, but <laughs> that we are all together like a spider web and how we transfer information, communication, and then the donors come. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, oh, I don't have money, it doesn't matter, just like click the share button, put like in the YouTube channel, and that's that changes a lot. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go. Okay, Jamie says, Hola, Paul Mena. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, thank you for Hi, connecting. Jamie. How are you? <laughs> yes, Jamie is at her out. house and she's like doing all the behind the scenes, seeing who's connected and just letting us know through the phone. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna go to the blank canvas to are see. We? Yes, do you wanna? We do. We want. Are you gonna start painting right now with us? No, no. I could. I'm just teasing. <laughs> you do have some shout outs on your phone. <laughs> Yeah, that we might want to. Okay, shout outs. Do you have? Okay, some yes, I have some phone? shout outs over well, we here. Need this. So we thank you, Paul Mena, for connecting, and shout out for Celia. Celia Devolt is always supporting us, mm -hmm. the beautiful Celia and Janice. Mm -hmm. And not us as Palapa, us as like the community, the mm -hmm. whole community. We're very thankful for them. Also, shout out to Jesse Lee, Roslyn Kosak. So hello guys. Hi guys. Hi Roz. Wow. Yeah. Friend of yours? Yeah. See, we're reaching the world. Yes. Where is she? <laughs> She's in Regina, Saskatchewan. Hi everybody. Hi. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's the thing about technology. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Who He's knows? speaking. Exactly. Maybe yeah. this painting goes to New Zealand. It can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We ship worldwide. You do? Yeah. Right. How do you ship your work? I don't know. Okay. Someone else does that. No. Wonderful <laughs> Jesse. We'll figure it out. It's no, but it's um we've had yeah, we've had collectors from all over, which all part of the pandemic thing is yeah. kind of really been good for is this community is is larger. People from around the world have been reaching out more to each yeah. other and that um, also is true in art and Yeah, like Mark is doing all this fusion because if you can see, oh well, now that we move, we're gonna have like a little bit of a shot of his of his work. Mm -hmm. He has, I know he likes mariachis and church. He like, he knows how to communicate this Mexican culture. Like as a Mexican, I see your work and I, I feel that I'm singing with those mariachis. I know that I know them. Mm -hmm. Like I can feel that I know their names, no? Also in that painting, which that, makes it magical, it makes it alive. It's what I was hoping would happen. I, you know, I moved down here to looking for inspiration. And you, I was, I think the important thing is to be open and not have those kind of preconceived ideas what you're going to find. Yeah. All I knew for sure was that I loved the ocean and I loved where it met the desert. And that was, yeah. that was how it started. But the, yeah, the culture, it speaks to me loudly. The whales too, I mean, holy crow, I was yeah. not interested at all in painting whales. And um, we're so close to them here. That yeah. The beaches are so deep so fast that they come right in to brush the barnacles off them. Mm -hmm. And so they're like right there, these majestic beasts. And those things are the things that get lodged in the subconscious yeah. that yeah. just, um, so I don't know why they're flying, but they're... Because they are flying. Because they're flying. Like if you will see, if, if you watch the, the ocean, it's yeah. exactly it's like a mirror from the universe. Right, yeah. They are flying. See. Like, and the sky is a mirror from the ocean. Well, that's from my Yeah, I love it. Just like yeah. my personal yeah. thought. Yeah. And they're also our spirit. <laughs> yeah. Our spirit <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you know what are you going to start doing in that white canvas? Do you have like... I have an idea. Okay. And that's the best I can usually do. Because okay. the thing is, even if I have a really good idea, by the time I, you know, uh, I start throwing paint around, it's going to be um, changing. And okay. that also, like I said, is, it's a surprise almost at every step until it starts coming to really comes together. Yeah. I'm open for whatever inspiration knocks out. You know, because I'm only, I think the best thing is to let, um, again, either the subconscious or whatever you want to call it, wherever those ideas come from, not to knock those preconceived things out of your head. Yeah. But, yeah, we're going to definitely do a whale because I think that's um, very uh, indicative of where we are in this, yeah. in this. And also the migration is still happening. Yes. Babies are coming baby whales, um, and uh, I think also 
El Rey, the king, the one that I, when I'm, the first time, a friend, I was started doing these whales small on driftwood pieces when mm -hmm. I first came down, and I started getting big, but they were always kind of in the center, and a friend, one of my friend, uh, artist friends, kind of convinced me to sort of start expanding beyond the borders of the edge of the canvas, and I was like, you know, why didn't I, of course I thought of that, you know, <laughs> I should do that, and that was one of the first pieces where the whale got really big because it could then I didn't have to show the whole thing so and so I'm gonna do something similar okay. to that piece maybe it'll be okay. maybe more Larina it'll be more the because it's me short time okay. and tell us a little bit like when you were 13 14 15 like the kids that go to our school like yeah. what inspired you was there like a teacher or a person or a movie or a song or whatever like did did, did you paint out when you were that age? Yeah, I um, I was awful student in high <laughs> school. But when I was in grade 10, I convinced the school to let me take grade 10 art and grade 11 art at the same time. Right. I, I don't know why they let me, but they so I could have two courses of art in one year, and I don't know what else I would knock out. But uh, I knew that I was going to do art in some capacity, and it was actually it was in high school. Or, or, things I figured out that you actually could make a living okay. at it and you know so yeah I was always making some kind of painting and some kind of music along the way but in high school it kind of crystallized and also probably being crappy at the rest of my course load <laughs> helped me kind of determine that that was absolutely no because you know you don't know what you want to do until you know what you definitely can't do yeah. or don't want to do yeah. and then it kind of points you in a better yeah. direction so yeah that I, I was, I can tell you I was more interested in music in high school than I was in other artists. Mm -hmm. But like I was saying, it, the music it, that I was listening to inspired me to be a, uh, an artist. And at that time it was all about comic books. Yeah. You know, mostly European comic books, but okay. or Japanese comic books, but less superheroes and more weird erotica and stuff, <laughs> you know. Do you see colors when you listen to music? Yeah. And images. Even if I don't know what the lyrics are, I yeah. start making, yeah, it comes that way, for sure. Music is hugely inspirational for the visual art. Yeah. So we're getting inside Mark's brain, <laughs> and we're so fortunate and happy that he's letting us. So just a reminder, if you don't follow us in our YouTube channel, please like the YouTube channel and start following us. And shout out, hey Laurel, how are you? Thank you for connecting. We love you, Laurel, always. <laughs> um, so we're gonna, do you wanna go into yeah, the white canvas? Yeah. To see, I think it's all about potential. The white canvas means potential. It's like, it. what is gonna happen over there? Okay, let's go look at it. Okay. It's all about the white canvas, it's, in, it's over here. So if you are here in town and you walk through this, through Militar Street, you're gonna see all the changes. Yeah. So it's gonna be very interesting. Yeah. So that's the, yeah, I think that's kind of what is also kind of exciting for us is that, yeah, if you're around, if you're a local, um, it's right in the window of, uh, on the studio side of the gallery um, for the next three weeks and it'll be um, updated. I'm not going to lie and say every day, but you know, every other day. Okay. -ish. It comes in fits and spurts, but it'll, yeah. it'll be, it'll be becoming something um, over the course of the three weeks. That's how we do it. And if you're not here locally and can't look through the window, you're going to be tuning into the website, the landing page, which all those links will be there. Yes. Um, yes. So the whole world can follow along, you know, all whatever eight, nine billion of you here. that are tuning in right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we were going to have a camera just in front of the... Like the shot is gonna be exactly the white canvas, but just changing. Yeah. So we're gonna see it virtually. Yeah. So do you start? Do you start um, vertically, or you paint horizontally? <laughs> <laughs> paint. So for those of you who don't know, Jimena is also a fantastic artist. So it's really nice to be talking to somebody who also understands the process differently, probably. But yeah, we definitely there's things that we do that are the same. But I um, no the the thing that I try to do what. Actually, I love most about a blank canvas is throwing paint on it and making it not white anymore. Yeah. And the whole process... Which is a little scary. It's scary. But that's why, the for me, also the technique that I use um, is based on that 
overcoming the fear. Because in the end, as you'll probably see, or around the end, it might be very close again to a white canvas. After all the layers of paint, yeah. um, I bring it back to a fairly neutral um, plane that can be, I can then put the image on. And I almost, I almost like a light neutral thing to paint on, mm -hmm. but I love that there's a story happening underneath that image. And the story is me getting rid of a white canvas yeah. and then coming back to terms with it through the course of the layer. Yes, we yeah. have to put that somewhere. The story is me getting rid of that white canvas. Jesse, you have to write that down. <laughs> That's a good quote. <laughs> so yeah, and also, if I was going to ever teach a workshop in it, um, in how to... Are you going to teach it at Palapa? I will. Oh, thank you so yeah. much, Mark. Right, let's do it next time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to wait for uh, the COVID because oh, no, 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 I want to, yeah, because yeah, 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 yeah. it want to be in a small room together. And yeah, exactly. Breathing on each other. Yeah. Um, no, the thing is that I, it's harder as a writer, you know, if you sit down with a blank screen to start making a sentence that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But as an artist, as a visual artist, mm -hmm. it's easy to just throw a piece of paint on there. Mm -hmm. It would be like, you know, whatever you want to do, a rag or brushes or just with your fingers, start smearing some color on there, and it almost doesn't matter which one because mm -hmm. you can paint over it. And that's how I always overcome the writer's yes. artist block. <laughs> yeah. And with you, I yeah. totally get that. Yeah. Yes. So if I go into the studio, and usually I don't paint during the day, Okay. Um, it's at night, but if I want to try and be productive in, during normal working hours, that's one of the things I can start doing. And because I, I know that um, it doesn't matter, you know, yeah. and you can kind of, it'll get covered up or not. The other thing is, what I love about the process that I've been, what I've developed is that I love exposing. I mean, this will be the first time I'm really exposing it, but I always love keeping little remnants. Um, shadows of those layers okay. so there's things yeah. it never gets completely painted over and you'll always see a little piece even of a white canvas sometimes in the yeah. final piece there'll be at least a little piece that is um, an archived version of that part of the process so if you look carefully at my work finished mm. you'll see almost every step every layer yeah if you want to if you want to look for it that, that's what make it that, that that's what makes it look Con tanta profundidad. Mm -hmm. Ricardo, help me. Depth. Depth. Ladies. That's, yeah, mm -hmm. helps with the depth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but me as an artist, I really, I, I want to know your secrets. Mm -hmm. I, I'm really curious about mm -hmm. what you do. I know that I, yeah, we've, I've talked to, with some people and they're like, how do you see do, mm -hmm. do that? Mm -hmm. So uh, we're very fortunate that you all are going to be able to see that, that he's sharing all that process with us, that's very strange, that's very rare, that doesn't happen a lot. <laughs> and he's such a rock star, talented, amazing, beautiful person. And thank you so much again for doing this. And you want to talk a little bit more about you, um, tell us a little bit more about your creative process, what's your favorite step? Of your process? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question, the step thing, because I want to say the beginning and the end, because all okay. the middle stuff is like, can be tedious. I'm, I'm almost a professional procrastinator when it comes <laughs> to the middle stuff. Okay. I have a lot of good things I can get to to avoid getting, you know, doing the thing. But as we've talked about before, a lot of what happens between the beginning and the end is staring yeah. at the work. And uh, I think that's one of my favorite things, actually, is just, I will also, along with everybody else, be staring at whatever stage I'm at, trying to figure out what comes next. Because yeah. there's never a roadmap, even if I've done a painting and I remember what I did that I liked before, um, it's always different every time. So for me, the thing is the I like the surprises. I sometimes want to avoid the big surprises by, because I you get into these fear, these moments where you don't want to touch it, you think it's already like, yeah. this is good, and I really like the way this layer hits that layer, but you know, as I will know, as you all will know, that it'll be far from complete. There's no whales there, it's just a bunch of paint, yeah. but there's these little moments that I love, yeah. and I don't want to paint over them, so that's how I 
so keep some of them and then a few steps later yeah. it's like oh I don't know if I can keep that anymore <laughs> like maybe and there's this is it is it Oscar Wilde it's an author it comes from I think author a writer who said you have to kill your darlings about sentences that you want to okay. hold, hold on to that just don't work in the finished piece and I think that's a huge thing um, that keeps me from painting faster a lot of times is that I sit there and I stare at things at what I'm doing either I love it mm -hmm. and I don't want to destroy it yeah. or it's not working for me and I have to figure out a way to get you know paint myself out of that yeah. corner so I have to say that the process is not my favorite part but it is who I am yeah. and it's it can be painful it's a lot of heartache <laughs> <laughs> and you know because there's you once you've painted over it it's gone and, yeah. and only I know until this moment, you know, until yeah. we're, we're going to expose this, that that little piece of painting was really important somehow. And um, so what I, I guess the formal part of what I really like is when it all starts really coming together, which is close to the end. And yeah. um, I really, I am also, I'm becoming surprised at what, what has happened, what I've done, yeah. what's channeled through me from whatever power and this, you know, either the subconscious or whatever, yeah. all the things, because I can come out of a, you know, after two or three days of intense painting, can, can suddenly see what I've been doing. Yeah. Almost like you watch on, you know, I love watching those videos of other artists doing something, and you're like, you watch for five minutes, you don't know what they're even drawing. Yeah. I can do that to myself. Yeah. But I'm not enjoying it because I'm in some kind of trance, and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, that's, that's not bad, you know, that, that's, <laughs> I can, this is good. And yeah. so that kind of surprise is what I'm talking about. I can yeah. really, I can appreciate myself for the first time after all that struggle or whatever it is. Because um, it's not totally enjoyable, the process. No, because it's scary. Yeah. And it's, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's like drinking water, which should be always awesome. But I tend to choke on water. Yeah. Also, I mean, yeah, art is not all the time just to, it's not all about just being beautiful no it's about emotion emotions and as human beings we have so many emotions it's not only like oh we're happy all the time yeah we're not yeah so it is the same you're being painting for a month if that month you were happy all the time while you're painting you're yeah. like wow yeah. like i want to go <laughs> to therapy with you <laughs> that's great right but <laughs> yeah and that i mean that is kind of what we're doing here right yeah. just some therapy happening yeah yeah so thank you so much for the people that are uh, donating right now while we're streaming. Please, if you donate, just go to Mark Gabriel. And about like talking about emotions, uh, that's what our teachers have been telling us. Like how what's the biggest change from personal education to distance learning? It's all about the emotions. Mm -hmm. It's all about the emotions of the students and the parents. And the teachers and how to like how how do you connect to a student if you're not in person how do you connect through a screen so like for us to be able to do that we need really good teachers and for us to have really good teachers we need really good donors yeah. so we are very thankful for everyone that's donated and please like you can start bidding anytime we know the painting is gonna be Marvelous, amazing, mind blowing, because we know Mark's work. So I'm mean, surprised there hasn't been a bit already, because I know at least one yeah. luminary in town, an, an artist I, I hold in high regard, went, wanted to buy it the way it was. <gasps> wow. <laughs> but I, don't, I don't know what that means, because it's not going to stay like this, but yeah. Anyway. But, well, that's a conceptual thing, like you're yeah. buying the white canvas. Yeah. From Mark, yes. So I wonder how that process could work a little bit. Do you think if someone was like, you know, I, I want it the way it is, they, we have to go to the end of it, obviously, we have to go to the end. But this happens a lot when I'm yeah. working here, and it'll happen, you know, at that juncture where you're kind of like, oh, I'm sitting there looking at this thing that I know is like 50% done, and I know it's not done, but it, it's confounding me or something about it. You have to put it, and sometimes I'll put that on the wall. Yeah. And so people come in and it looks like a finished painting and they want to buy it that way. And, yeah. and I'm like, do I tell them it's only half done? Or do I let them make the decision that yeah. it's done if you love it? Yeah. But I guess you can't do it this way that but, way. Well, Unless I don't finish in three weeks and then it'll be... Like, it depends on how much the bid is. <laughs> so <laughs> if you don't buy it like this, yeah. the bid has to be really high. Yeah. Okay, so usually we're like 
I don't know, fifteen thousand dollars. That's what we make when yeah. we do the Dos Santos Open Studio tour. So you can be that if you want the white card. Okay. Because if not, we need to do all the process. I will no? sign it though. I'll sign it. Oh, of course. Because otherwise, they need me right. Yeah. If, because <laughs> what's the? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, it is. Like a white canvas. Because it's been hanging here, because we were going to do this a couple of days earlier, yeah. right? And then um, I've been putting it up here, and I think the chair helps, and the whole yeah. the white wall and the white, and I think people are like, oh my god, I love that. It's yeah. very conceptual. It's very conceptual. <laughs> that's very 2021. Well, no, that's like 2000 when it was like very conceptual art. Right now it has changed a little bit. Yeah, and maybe. Um, I was going to tell you, I think one of the things that got me really interested in painting again um, was when Radiohead's OK Computer came out. Do you remember okay. that record? Yeah. Do you remember the album cover? It was all, it wasn't all white, but it was very white. And it was like white on white and like little things. Yeah. And I, it was digital, a digital painting. And at the time I was doing digital paintings only because I was working in a, as a film production designer. So I just had to, whenever I had moments, do little things. So I got really inspired when I saw this piece. I don't know, was it in the mid-90s? I don't know when it yeah, was exactly. Yeah. But, um, right in the mid-90s. Yeah. yeah. And, and I also remember the philosophy of making that art was, even though it was digital and you can, you know, um, undo any step along the way, that the yeah. designer, the person who created that work, um, gave himself their own rule of no un undoes. They had to paint over it. So okay. if they didn't like something they just did, they had to paint over it or put something else on a collage, another piece on, and then paint it. So, you know, um, that excited me a lot. And that it reminded me of what I liked, uh, I loved about painting, paint yeah. Um And so from that day, I was like, I couldn't wait to get back into this. It still took me years yeah. to get back into a studio and have to do some real painting, but that was sort of started the thing. And that sort of, I think, uh, I owe a lot to that image and that uh, philosophy, yeah. that design, conceit um, of what I'm doing there. But the white on white and the, that whole thing. Yeah. yeah. So if I could do this my whole life, I'd just do these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd be so unhappy. <laughs> we need some. That, but you play music. Yeah. So then you're. Right. That's also, yeah, that's uh, one little tidbit I will share right now for sure is one of my, my best. Uh, my best um, when I'm at my best as a procrastinator it's what I can <laughs> jump to the guitar okay. and yeah. do something like that and then still feel like I'm doing something in a day and it's worth something but it doesn't I can get away from yeah. this yeah yeah well talking about like digital art that's what that's one of the advantages now with this like distance learning is that all our kids are learning how to. There were kids that didn't know how to use a computer. Yeah, really. Like, they really were totally um, distanced from that world. Mm -hmm. So, this is opening all these new worlds and ways of living and making money. So, not everything is bad. I mean, all, all bad things have like a, a silver lining. No, so the silver lining in this is that kids are learning how to use technology right now that they're 13, 12, mm -hmm. 13, 14 years old. And if we can like just inspire the kids to use it to do like videos, no, like to edit, to mm -hmm. do create, to do art, and then all these emotions can, um, you know, uh, be for a better community, world, education, and. Oh, we can only do this if you donate. Yeah. And this is a school, it's different from any school. We don't have any government uh, support. Right. So we're not like a private school because the kids don't pay all the tuitions. We're not a government school because we don't have the support of the government. We live with, for, with the donors. So we really appreciate all of your donations and we encourage you to donate to bid on the painting, to be part of the Palapa family, to be part of the community, to help the kids of Todos Santos. Uh, if you see the stories, the stories of the Becca kids, the stories that we publish in our newsletters, in the social media, of the amazing kids that we have. They're so creative, smart. Uh, they have like all the las ganas. 
the willpower. The willpower to do things. They want to grow. They want to go to college. They learn. If we ask them, they want to be astronomers and they want to mm -hmm. be mathematicians. Wow. So we like as Palapa. What we want is to open all those doors and their minds, and they, they they know that they can do all of that. They can achieve whatever they want, but they need help. Mm -hmm. So as a community uh, with artists like Mark and with you as donors, we really appreciate your help. And if we can just like make a whole bunch of money right now. <laughs> that Where can people go to bid on the painting? Okay, so you have to go to our website that it's here and you can be over there. You are going to see the link mm -hmm. you go to the Todos Santos Open Studio through website and you can be over there. We're going to be sharing the links through social media and you can just click the link and you be over it at the website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're going to be publishing how the bid is going. Yeah. Yeah. Can I bid after the live stream is over? Of course, you can bid for these three weeks. You can bid every day, anytime, until April 2nd, that we're gonna do the final, and we're gonna even maybe have some Mark music. And Yes, uh, we'll do that. Yes. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in. We're gonna finish up with a little video that we did in 2018. Uh, it's a, a bit old. We were gonna do one in 2020, but of course we know we all know about the circumstances, so we couldn't. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much, Mark. Anything you wanna say to say bye to the viewers before we? So I was gonna add to that. You know, the same page where you can do the bidding is gonna be the same page you're gonna see the updates of the work. So you'll see this change on the wall, um, almost like stop motion, and then also on the same page. We'll post some of the process videos that I'm going to probably film myself. Ricardo might come and do some help me out because I'm, you know, whatever. <laughs> I could be in a bit of a trance sometimes and I would be, yeah, I need someone outside of me to, but I will be posting those videos as well of like the actual process stuff. Um, and that will all be on the same page where you can do the bidding. So that's, I think that's important that it's a, everyone can find that home. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Stay tuned. Uh, we'll be sharing, share our posts, see the vid, see the website, uh, watch all Mark's magic. Uh, we're very fortunate that he's sharing that with us. And here is a video from 2018, so you have a better idea about Palapa. Thank you. Have a thank good you. weekend. Thanks, Palapa. Thank you, Thanks. Mark. Awesome. Yes, <laughs> Thanks, yes. everybody. Thank you. Established by volunteers in 2003 in Todos Santos, Mexico, the mission of the Palapa Society is to improve educational attainment, increase civic engagement, and empower youth and their families to reach their full potential. The Palapa School grew out of requests from parents, professionals, and community members who identified a need for an alternative to the existing overcrowded and ill-equipped public secondary schools. My name is Juan Diego Gonzalez. Soy el director de la Escuela de La Palapa, nivel secundaria, aquí en Todos Santos, Baja California Sur. En nuestra escuela hay varias cosas que las distinguen de otras escuelas. Por ejemplo, tenemos un sistema de becas en la que el 100% de los estudiantes reciben un tipo de beca. Tenemos un enfoque en las matemáticas, en las ciencias y también en habilidades de lenguaje. Tenemos el respeto como el corazón de nuestra comunidad educativa. Promovemos la igualdad y equidad de género. Mi materia favorita son las matemáticas. Lo que más me gusta son las matemáticas. Matemáticas. Ciencias y artes. Matemáticas, física y ciencias. The Palapa School opened in 2017 with grades 7 and 8 and 40 students. This fall, we added grade 9 and increased the total number of students to 60 while maintaining a 20 to 1 student to teacher ratio. The curriculum includes a focus on technology, science labs, project-based and experiential learning from highly qualified educators with emphasis on the academic and social skills that will prepare students for the challenges of the 21st century.
En la Escuela de la Palapa está certificada por la Secretaría de Educación Pública, lo cual significa que nosotros podemos ofrecer diplomas que son aceptados en todo México. Tenemos un programa de reciclaje y también de no usar plásticos en nuestra escuela. La Escuela de la Palapa hace servicio comunitario y cada semana limpia alrededor de la escuela toda la basura. Estoy muy entusiasmado de estar al frente de nuestra escuela porque vamos a ir creciendo y esperamos el próximo año abrir preparatoria. We hope you consider our relevant and compelling Palapa School Growth Project, which will expand the successful Palapa School model to include a college prep, life skills, and leadership high school. We believe that it has the potential to positively impact the lives of hundreds of Todos Santos youth and their families. Soy un apasionado de lo que hago y yo espero que más personas se comprometan con este proyecto y que hagan sus donaciones porque así van a ayudar no solo a un estudiante sino a toda una comunidad en Todos Santos. A mí me gustaría estudiar Ingeniería Mecánica y especializarme en Robótica. Me gustaría estudiar Diseño Gráfico. Especializarme en la Robótica. Doctora o Criminología. Yo lo que quisiera ser es maestra. Our long-term goal is to serve middle and high school students by providing an academic track to university in accordance with Mexican Secretary of Education standards and best practices. The future of Mexico is in our hands. We would love the opportunity to share more of our successes and dreams with you 